Hey all, how are we going? It is wonderful to see everybody. I uh, have really enjoyed uh, watching a couple of comments come through uh, as I've been getting set up. It's been several weeks since I've been on stream. Uh, if you're watching the recording, I uh, also welcome you very much to the uh, to this kind of like let's say broadcast and. Uh, what am we going to look at today? I was reading This Week in Rust and I saw this really wonderful workshop come up and I thought I am super pumped to kind of give this a go. And so where am I? I uh, uh, Rust walkthroughs, full stack Rust web workshop. Shuttle, Actix Web, SQLX, and uh, Diosis, which I still haven't figured out how to pronounce. So uh, here is the link to the workshop. And uh, this is what we are going to be going through uh, for the next wee while. I say the next wee while because there's a bit of a caveat that uh, it expects that, you know, this workshop duration is supposed to be about two hours. And uh, oh, let's let's make it bigger so you can actually see. So we're supposed to be about two hours uh, in time. Now it's already half past, nearly half past ten uh, here in New Zealand, and so I don't know whether or not I will a be able to finish on in in time, or whether or not I will actually just kind of like fall asleep in front of the the camera. And so hopefully uh, we are going to have a lot of fun. Uh, no one has been complaining about audio issues or not being able to hear me, so presumably that that works. Uh, yeah, let's get going. The Let's start. So, but I, I should also mention that I'm sort of doing this live. So I don't actually have anything prepared. Here's my code editor. Uh, and all I've got is my settings file uh, available. And it was sort of starting completely blank. And uh, that's where we're at. So let's start with uh, going. I just kind of sc um, scrolled all the way down to the bottom. And okay, so prerequisites. Let, I have Rust installed, so that's good. Uh, and I am using Visual Studio Code. And I've got most of these um, following extensions Better Rust Toml, Rust Test Explorer, Rust Client. Um, curious as to whether or not, so I'll just um, uh, highlight those for everybody while I install them. Uh, are these the extensions that you use as well for yourself. Um, if you use uh, Rust, oh sorry, VS Code, um, or and if you don't use uh, VS Code, like what is your preferred uh, editor and so forth? Uh, by the way, just in case you are relatively unfamiliar with the way that like live streaming works, you are very welcome to become uh, sorry to to comment, and but bear in mind there is about a up to a minute of delay between when your comment is submitted and when I see it, just because of the fact that my my uh, there's a delay when I transmit something and the internet. <laughs> It's just generally bad, so I uh, have got that installed already. Better Tommel, probably not necessary, but useful. Uh, this will be a uh, way to uh, provide syntax highlighting for the Tommel config language. And what else do I need here? A Rust test explorer. Rust, and I don't need ML. I don't know why that's there. you and run your tests. Okay, cool. And REST client, interesting. Three and a half million installs. So there's a popular, <laughs> there's a popular um, extension. It's interesting though, because I'm sure only about like six people have given that, this person any money, even though over three million people rely on it. 
So now we go into some cargo instructions. Uh, so I'm going to open up a terminal window. And you can see here that I'm just being very, very boring and using a stock standard Ubuntu terminal. Uh, nothing fancy in terms of uh, in terms of essentially my setup. I keep there are some things that I really want to do. One of them is like install uh, Zelly, which is a kind of a competitor or rewrite of Tmux, let's say. Uh, because I wanted to do multiplexing myself now so but again yeah this is completely live we're completely raw here and so what Rust is doing with this cargo install functionality uh, if you are relatively unfamiliar cargo is a tool that is used heavily within the Rust ecosystem for being able to manage installations of software and uh, it centers in, uh, it's in, it's the package manager for Rust, essentially. Uh, it was originally an outside project, but kind of got pulled into the, the core. Wow, Rust is at 35 billion downloads. Um, and what, what we're looking for is a cargo shuttle, what we call a crate. And here it is here. So. There have been uh, about 10,000 downloads of uh, this, this cargo shuttle thing and uh, recently about 5,000. So it's obviously growing very, very rapidly, hopefully with a, a small uptick because uh, there have been people watching this um, thing go through and <laughs> maybe there'll be one or two people who decide to install it because of uh, this tutorial. It's curious, I wonder who sits around for a couple of hours and thinking, you know what I've got to do? I've got to watch someone like compiling code. <laughs> if that's you, I, pre I applaud you, I, I do. Like, uh, it's actually quite cool that you have decided to kind of provide yourself um, some mental space. I've got three kids and so, you know, seven, five, and one. And I only have time after 9 p.m. essentially, after they are asleep, which is why I'm starting uh, this off at like ridiculous o'clock. Um, let's close that down and look to some other um, other things that we need. I am going to open up, let's say, a new tab. And I'm going to try and see if I can install two things at once. Now this is irritating because they both have different font sizes. So that's not useful. So I'm uh, now I'm stressing the compiler out like quite a lot. Um, oh no, now the compiler is working uh, over here and over there. But hopefully that should uh, actually end up speeding things up. I know this is an extremely boring part of the process. Uh, it's just kind of one of these things. We, uh, I don't know what dBeaver is. And maybe the two hours includes all of the setup time, probably doesn't. Um, I'm going to skip dBeaver. Presumably it's just some tool for being able to interact with um, a database. Um, and... I kind of can't be bothered. I don't think it will be necessary. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Cargo watch, I've got that. Cargo make, I um, will be able to just do that as I go. I kind of want to get started with some code and I know that everything there are kind of like supporting tools. So I'm just going to pass on that. So uh, we talk a little bit what we're using here in terms of our uh, tooling. The, I'll just move me to a different part of the screen so that I'm not in the way. And um, the tools that we are going to use are um, Actix and SQLX and Shuttle for deployment. So Actix Web is a web framework. SQLX is a, an abstraction library over a database. And we've got a dry run workshop repository. Cool, each commit responds to a step of the 
workshop. That's really good um, because it means that I, I am going to be able to uh, get uh, get going. Or what I'm going to do is I am going to be able to... Do I need to go and clone this first? Let's... So there's the code, great, I mean fine, but what I, this isn't actually a very good way to start. So it's telling me to start by creating a new workspace. Does that mean I start one from scratch? Um, cargo new, what should I call it? I need to create, and this is our, so what we're actually trying to create is a, a movie manager. So I'm just gonna call this a movie DB. And it's created a cargo package, but what I'm being asked to do is create um, something different. So I create this cargo.toml file. This is not what it wants. It wants to have um, something called uh, a sort of a root. Uh, I want a plus, or oh, actually in here, I well, I need a workspace and I'm going to have a new folder in here and that one's going to be called API. And in here I've got lib. And inside I also have a new folder, shuttle. It's probably going to end up that I'm going to be told that I should just clone a repository at the start of the commit or at each step. Now maybe I should just do that. Um, That might be easiest. That way I'm gonna have less likely to get into trouble. Um, so I'm just um, bring, opening up the code editor here and I'm gonna blow away everything that I've done so far, which is just to create this folder um, movie DB. And I'm going to sort of git clone uh, the workshop. Let's dry run repository. That's all fine. Now I am going to. Well, that, it's weird that I've put a SQL tools connections. Interesting. They've put their own settings file. So I'm going to move across my settings. Actually, I'm going to avoid doing so for right now. Uh, let's go back to the workshop. Get in it. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I should have scrolled down for the instructions. My apologies. I'm going to start again. I'm sorry, this is really not looking likely as though I will finish in my two hour slot. Um, okay, create a new folder for the project and call, and initialize a new workspace by creating a cargo.toml file. Okay, I should actually follow the instructions. Eventually, we will get to some actual Rust code, I promise. Uh, I'm in fact very, very confident. Um, and this will be called MovieDB. And inside MovieDB, I will do exactly what I've been told this time. I'll create a new file called cargo.toml. And inside there, I will call it a workspace. And I will have three members. API slash lib. API slash shuttle. Now, a member of a workspace is an individual crate. Do you remember how we talked about crates uh, as part of like crates.io and cargo? Um, they are, um, you keep things in a workspace because you can, uh, it enables you to share code more easily and in particular share compilation uh, stuff. Now it's also telling me to get in it. So inside the movie DB directory, I'm going to run get in it. And so I've initialized an empty um, repository. 
creating the crates. Now for the API, I've got two, totally optional. Okay, great. Okay, so we are now going to, let's create the lib crate by with the following command. Uh, let's explain what's going on. So cargo new creates a new, a new project or a, sorry, a new crate in a location API slash lib with a name API dash lib that is defined as a library crate, which means it has no main function. And it also, we also ask cargo to avoid putting a, like its own virtual control system, like a Git repository inside that new crate. Okay. Ah, oh, here we go. That's all what this explains to you. Um, is all, is, it's all explained to you in the docs. Okay, so I'm going to uh, ls, I've got cargo.toml, we're going to run that command, and then we uh, get a bit of a warning. It's saying that I followed to load the manifest, but that actually should be okay. Inside api slash lib, um, I have uh, something that looks pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted a, I've got an add function with left and right uh, and a test. So that's useful, I suppose. And uh, I actually get a um, some reassurance about the error message that I just got, saying that I uh, that we're actually going to fix this up because I need to create the other two members of my workspace for Rust to kind of be a little bit. It, you know, I've defined a workspace that contains three members, but at this stage, I've only got one. So I've now created the second, and then uh, the third is the shared library. Oh, and interestingly, I get a quite a neat help message here saying that if I, because I've created with a cargo shuttle in it, saying that I, uh, so cargo is like a subcommand that we installed right at the beginning and I'll preset up, initialize a new create API slash shuttle, probably dash T, I'm assuming type or template, uh, actix, actix slash web, name is API shuttle, so that's all good. And now we get this really nice help message saying that we can clone from a, a thing. And if you need, uh, more help here is here are the docs and so if you're still following on and of which there are definitely a um, a couple of people um, i'm just going to uh, post a comment in the chat so there are the there are, there's the documentation for shuttle and um, Here's a question that I want to explain the answer to. So over in Twitch, we've got uh, JS uh, Fakanachi, uh, I hope there's a hard C, uh, saying, what is the difference between a package and a crate? Now, this is something that I always get slightly wrong, but essentially, a for most purposes, they are the same except very technically a Rust package has, uh, oh, I'm going to get this wrong, but the uh, you can mostly ignore this until you can't and then you can read the cargo documentation um, to actually understand the very subtle differences. It relates to the fact that a uh, actually, I, I don't remember anymore off the top of my head. Now that is embarrassing because I should know the different distinction. Uh, but I just know one of the things that indicates that they're actually very, very similar is that the term package came to the Rust ecosystem before crates existed. And so crates kind of, uh, so those two terms kind of almost coexist, but not quite. Often they're used in a way that is uh, completely interchangeable, which is also confusing. Um, 
but uh, so apologies for not giving a, a, a decent answer to that question. Um, but you won't need to know the answer unless you're the kind of person that are publishing lots of stuff. And by the time that you're that deep, you will have found the section in the documentation that describes the very specific difference. Okay, let's proceed. We are now we've got our uh, we've got shuttle, and I'm just not seeing. Did I not do that correctly? Let's create a shuttle crate. Ah, oh, it's in API lib. Okay, great. So that's all the way up here. And the third one we're creating is we've got front and shared. What we're creating here is the shared space. And shared library. And I'll just uh, go I'll open this up and give myself some more space so you can see what I'm doing. I just create my new shared um, library package. Um, yeah. Oh, just a, one last thing on the distinction. Typically, the term package is very slightly broader. And the, oh, so I'm just going to build that um, project. It's saying I can't see where I am. And that's because I need to, oh, actually, I need to remove RF shared cd movie db and now inside there i need to create my shared library cargo build notice i don't have a warning from cargo that my workspace is misconfigured which is positive sign well a positive sign let's say um and now all of a sudden i will receive a lot of messages about compilation. Uh, I'm going to go and do something which isn't in the script, but I'm going to create a git ignore file. And inside my git ignore file, and I'm just going to close the terminal down, I'm going to eliminate the target directory uh, because the target directory is the all of the thousands of bits of Rust that Rust needs, uh, like essentially all of the things that Rust has compiled, and um, and I don't need it. It's not it's not essential. And so if you look in the picture on the right, you can see that we've got like two thousand there. And this two thousand is because they haven't eliminated. Oh look. <laughs> That's what the thing says. Okay, right now we are going to add a grid, grid ignore and then add a target. And it also says we're going to add a capital S secrets um, dot tomo or star tomo. At, so that's hilarious. Uh, and <laughs> okay, so and now it says we should commit the changes. So once again, I'm being like it's being proven that actually the way to do this workshop is to just follow the instructions. So if I do get uh, uh, get add everything and get commit initial commit. Okay, I've just inserted two and a half thousand uh, lines of code, which is great. Um, <laughs> And primarily, most of that will actually be related to shuttle, presumably, because uh, I can't imagine. Oh, actually, the cargo.lock file. There is a an argument for not including your lock file in the, under version control, um, but the cargo.lock file is an auto-generated file that describes exactly how your dependencies uh operating as well yeah, so all of their dependents as well as the checksums and uh, specific versions and so forth and all of the features that you have enabled um, so that's why I have two and a half thousand lines of code cool we are almost ready to actually create our very first function like our uh, very first API so 
Open the API-shuttle folder and look for source.main. So this is the entry point of our application. You should see something that looks like this. And it's hard to see that because I have got my screen, uh, my, my text too large, but um, let's see if I can give myself some more space. I do, submit, I do see something that looks a little bit like that. That's great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so generated hello world, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. The Axum web function is the entry point for our application. So that's this one on line 10 here. And it returns a shuttle actix web instance that will be used by shuttle to run our application. So um, what is that? Uh, this is a relatively horrible type signature. Um, but a shuttle actix web is something that returns uh, some callable. So to me, if when I see if in once or any a trait, there are three traits that relate to callable objects. So it's a it returns some function or that implements if in once. It turns out that if in once is actually a trait or an interface uh, that accepts a service config as an argument. The, and it also is able to uh, be sent across threads as well as cloned, which means it's duplicated, uh, and uh, is static, which means that it isn't bound to a lifetime of anything within the current, within within um, the like current context of the uh, like this function here there is no essentially it will look it could potentially live for the lifetime of the program okay let's try and give it a go it's saying here that we can just run it okay cargo shuttle run oh building building oh, we're live <laughs> api shuttle on uh, localhost port 8000. Now I'm going to open up a new terminal and run curl and localhost. Tokyo runtime is found starting to 8000. Hello world! Ta da! Hooray! Yes! I'm able to copy and paste code into my code editor and for it to work fantastically well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Try to add more roots and to see what is what happens. Oh, that seems hard. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Okay, that does seem a little bit hard. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to actually do a slight segue to... Uh, my settings file and I'm going to make the code editor slightly smaller um, hopefully it will still be legible to those people sitting in the back if it's not please shout out in the comments oh I should also check my comments uh, and there was a bit of debate in the comments around the lock file. So I said that you there is a debate about whether or not you should check it into version control. And immediately, well not quite immediately, we've had uh, Sergio come and say, what about reproducibility? And in fact, that isn't a unique uh, um, comment. Um, there is this kind of additional uh, note that says, well, you shouldn't commit it if you're building a library, but do commit it for an application uh which is more or less accurate i think that the uh nuances of when to commit this lock file are really relevant i don't like the idea of wedging yourself to a specific version in version control because you always want the ability for your application or your library to be able to be upgraded very very easily and um, because you really need to be able to be on a like the third because we because in Rust we depend on so many third party dependencies so frequently. Uh, the um, the benefits of being able to have like a seamless upgrade are really really significant. Um, 
and uh, but I again we don't need to have that debate here. I'm curious as to what people say in the comments actually. Um, but but yes, this principle of uh, essentially binding yourself to specific versions once you're building an application uh, seems you know perfectly reasonable as well as maybe allowing it to be slightly more flexible in the case of a library because you don't know you've got less control about the environment you the build environment of where your library might be built from um, is one of the reasons uh, in terms of reproducibility I think anyway I I, I, sh I, sh I should keep to this workshop otherwise it's going to be like four hours in and it's going to be 4 a.m and I will have a very very bad Saturday okay so we're now being told that we want to go and create a new file and it should be called uh, shuttle with a capital S and dot toml shuttle by the way is a service for being able to deploy uh, web applications and we're calling ours MovieDB and um, and now we commit the code okay so I'm going to close down my web server and to actually deploy it you should we get some more help message so thanks shuttle um, I don't care right now so git status there should be one file git add shuttle git commit uh, dash m for message and uh, add uh, shuttle.toml. Great. And now we can deploy it apparently to the cloud. And uh, okay. Now I'm just going to skip doing the fake deploy um, because it says here we need, immediately need to log in. Now I don't have a shuttle account, I don't think. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to log in with GitHub and I'm going to go off the screen and basically do the auth um, such that I don't like reveal API keys to the internet <laughs> and so forth. Um, the, uh, I wonder if this is going to work. Got a tick. Okay. So, um, so that was actually really easy. Uh, on the once I clicked the slash login file thing, I was given a uh, access straight to the shuttle RS um, dashboard, and then there are like steps, and it says you should. Here's your API key, so that was useful. Um, shuttle deploy. 404 run okay shuttle in it so it also said that i should actually provide i it, over here I, I cargo shuttle in it which i skipped so again tim keeps skipping his instructions do you want me to call your what do you want me to name your project uh let's call <laughs> if i call it movie db i feel like there'll be no one else in the whole world that will call a movie db uh maybe i'm going to call it tim clicks movie db should we where should we create this directory uh where should shout out of uh, I again I didn't actually oh, gosh I should have followed the instructions <laughs> and the name movie DB <laughs> is now taken so I when I did it myself <laughs> I just uh, okay sorry so forever so you have to think of something else presumably because i bet that moviedb dot shuttle um is going to actually be a real thing and the cool thing is if you're live or if you're on the recording 
you are going to be able to hit curl on this web uh, front like right now. Actually, it's like going to be live on the internet uh, at moviedb.shuttle, whatever it was, dot whatever it was. <laughs> I should actually say I'm not being paid or anything by Shuttle. It's just I'm following the workshop and I, I've been following the Shuttle project for a while. And so um, I'm kind of interested in seeing where it, where it gets to. Uh, come on, come on, come on. I, I'm really excited. I want it. I don't. Why do you need to? CPU features, why? Match it, what's match it? Heck, yeah, heck is, heck is a good name. Interestingly, they're bringing in Spin. Now, Spin is an interest, is, an, is almost a competitor to Shuttle, uh, built by a company called Fermion. Um, and uh, it, it provides the ability, like Fermion provides the ability for you to like run WebAssembly applications in the cloud. Um, pretty much with um, no effort. And now we're getting to some more actic stuff. So we must be getting close. Come on, let's go. I just love compiler output, don't I? I just, how boring is this? I mean, imagine you could be watching a movie right now. You could be watching a, you know, some kind of entertainment, but instead <laughs> you're watching compiler output. So that's positive. Um, uh, probably you have made more progress on the workshop materials than I have. So uh, I'm just going to go back to the, um, the, the, the URL and, and like I'm going to create a banner uh, on here. Boom. There we go. So this is the actual URL that I'm that I'm using. Aha! MovieDB.shuttleapp.rs open. Now you on the internet can curl right now. So I'm going to hide this and create a new one, which is here as a command to uh, to execute in the terminal. I just change it just so that it looks like a terminal window. Uh, I just need to find my dollar sign. There we go. So if and let's do that on my side. Uh, I'll move right. Uh, the bottom isn't very good. Cool. HTTPS presumably movie db dot shuttle app dot rs. Hello world. Woo! Okay, now have you done that? Because if you have, you're amazing. Success. Nice. <laughs> That's wonderful to see. Okay, so this is a live thing. So like we're 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 doing it live, as it were. Uh, so if you would like to go in and like, be a bit more curious of like what's going on here, I always encourage people to uh, inspect the output. So. And that is with the dash i is actually something different that issues a head request, not a get request. What one is like dash v for um, verbose. Uh, and you can see here that it's TLS. Uh, there's the IP address, which is fine. And we, yeah, I think it's quite cool actually that even though we've just done something in like on our command line, we've actually got a, a let's encrypt uh, like it's all wired together really nicely. So that's cool. And um, content link 12, da 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 da, -da. Um, Okay, time for me to stop playing or at least, well, is it? No, it's not time for me to stop playing. It's the whole point. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm excited. Hopefully you're excited. <laughs> this time I'm actually going to try to read the instructions before typing. Shuttle is, had, provides an A. I don't need any of this. <laughs> Some interesting commands. Oh, logs. Let's let's look at the logs. Um, now there is a. So that that okay. So we we. I mean, fine. We we see we've got some logs. I. 
<laughs> that's okay cool i mean that's fun uh we can um so we can go and access whatever is live um right now that's cool working with a database uh oh i kind of wish that they are uh, using postgres which is a real database and um i'm a bit scared here because i would thought they would have used like sqlite uh Go to your cargo.toml file in your API shuttle folder. Okay, API shuttle. Uh, I'll remove the banner. Um, it's probably no longer quite as um, as interesting now. Also, I um, uh, toggle status bar visibility. That's kind of annoying. So hopefully. Um, now sorry it's a bit confusing i will also remove the explorer oh let's okay so i should stop tinkering now over in cargo.toml file inside this one um view mini map so that's no longer there and shuttle shared database uh, features Postgres. Okay, that seems neat. And uh, SQLX version six point uh, uh, six three default features false features uh, active TLS uh, macros da -da 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 -da, UAD Chrono JSON. Okay, so allow me to explain how SQL. A lot of these very mature, uh, very mature at point zero six. Um, CQLX provides the ability for you to essentially opt in to what features are specific, like available to your application. The reason why you don't necessarily want every feature all of the time is that. If you use everything, there's much more work for the compiler to do. So everyone's complaining about the Rust compiler. Um, and one of the ways that you can essentially avoid that is by not turning on all the switches. Um, it's not the only, and the, and the other thing is that you will have, end up with less code. Or like, like physically, I say physically, the size of the executable that you are compiling will be smaller if you use fewer features because by almost by definition, there is less code being generated. Let's talk through what these actually uh, uh, go through. So, uh, so we, we, we're using Actix to uh, provide a native uh, TLS. So this is um, HTTPS support. Uh, macros, which means that we get a little bit of extra functionality or some kind of syntactic convenience. Uh, Postgres, because we're talking to Postgres. UUID means that you can essentially, prov and Chrono and JSON probably provide, actually I'm not entirely sure, but all of these will provide SQLX with the ability for uh, it to kind of be given knowledge about the Rust native types and translating that into Postgres types. So Postgres uh, does have some qu quite sophisticated type, um, so, uh, like essentially uh, knows about what a timestamp is, and uh, we can rem remove the impedance mismatch between the two systems if we uh, give SQLX our database front end some more context uh okay uh, <laughs> again and we get this explanation if you want more to learn more please refer to the docs okay so now we've got our open main directory and shuttle api shuttle source api shuttle source main and add the following code as the first parameter of the actix web function that looks like a very odd syntax doesn't it i've got a uh, Actix web, and I'm going to create a new line here and add a new thing. Shuttle shared database. Why does that? Why can't that find it? I I need to save my cargo.toml file. Now I should get a bunch of recompilation stuff, and hopefully, uh, this error will go away. 
Um, if it doesn't well, we can just close the whole thing and just say, look, we're, we're done. <laughs> I got my hello world working. Uh, while the type inference stuff is, so I'm just going to try and build it again. And it turns out that we, these are large projects and we're doing a whole bunch of compilation, which is why the, the why the editor is struggling a little bit. Um, I now need to go around and like explain what on earth the syntax is uh, because it um, we are providing an attribute to uh, a PG pool. So this will be our Postgres database pool. Uh, and inside the shuttle runtime main, they would have defined, so shuttle runtime dash dash, oh, sorry, double colon, double uh, colon, colon main is a procedural macro and it will have, so it's kind of defined a, a DSL or a domain specific language for being able to provide more functionality to your application. In this case, we've got a shared database that is a Postgres database that is using a SQL X, uh, like a Postgres pool, sort of some a connection pool. And uh, so this isn't strictly Rust syntax. Uh, it is injected by the macro. So the macro will know how to take what we've written and turn it into valid Rust. Um, so sorry about, and like my editor is quite confused because it doesn't know what uh, on earth is going on here. Um, ah, okay, so we get a different compiler error from the compiler itself. It's just saying that we've got an unused variable, which is really helpful because it means that eventually we know that the code editor, which is Rust Analyzer, is going to catch up essentially. Now cargo build works. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Again, I cheated. Instead of reading, I, uh, I actually instead of read instead of reading the instructions, I just, just did the thing. So now let's uh, let's try cargo shuttle run and see what happens. You will see that the project is building and then it will fail with an error. Um, uh, help! If this is okay, good. Luck. Thankfully, it is the right. It's the same error. It's telling us that we need to have Docker running in our system. Is that the same? Is that the problem? It's not. No, I've got Docker. <laughs> I've got Docker running on my system, so I don't get the same error. I thought that they were talking about this unused variable thing, but actually, if you look very, very, if you squint, uh, you can see that uh, they're talking about these log messages error um, while inspecting Docker. So that is something that I didn't encounter. Because I already had Docker kind of running in the background. Oh, look at that. Did you see? Something said it was starting. And in fact, it has a connection string that I can connect to. Goodness me. <laughs> like, I'm quite impressed. Uh, starting my API. Now, this is not the cloud database. We haven't run deploy yet. This is the local database. Okay. Now we'll be able to find the connection string that we'll be able to use in our project. Try to connect to that database using a tool like dbeaver or pgadmin. I can't be bothered to do that. Um, uh, I've mucked around already. I'm going to, so now it's saying, uh, you won't be able to see this as easily. Um, I've got a panic because I just called control C. Uh, run cargo shuttle project start to create a project environment or deploy to deploy your service to shuttle. Now uh, I'm just going to do git status again to show you what we've changed. Uh, and then so we've got we've updated our lock file, this thing that we, <laughs> we've updated uh, cargo.toml, which is the uh, we added like these two those two dependencies and then we also added one line in the main.rs. And uh, let's say feature uh, add, uh, database support. Okay, cool. In this section, we will set up the database for our project. Okay. We will uh, we'll only <laughs> need one table for our movies. That's good. I, I, and there is the schema. 
Okay. Create a new file, API slash database or slash DB slash schema. Am I in the right place? New file, uh, schema dot SQL. And uh, there we go, I can copy and paste successfully. That's useful. Create extension if not, it doesn't exist, UAD OSSP. Uh, this is a, a Postgres extension to be able to provide presumably native um, support for UUIDs. Um, uh, and we use a, uh, and it provides a, uh, a function for creating one if it doesn't have one. Uh, so every user or every film in our films table gets a unique UUID. Um, UUID is kind of like a GUID or, uh, no, UUID is not something that I was going to say. I was, I was thinking about ULID, but UUID is uh, fine. I would actually think generate V4 would be better than V1. I, uh, I just want to have a, so V1 doesn't provide the semantics that I think, um, they're looking for you v4 provides randomness um, but my computer is going crazy now because i am doing all of this compilation stuff in the background uh, and apparently my mouse has decided to go nuts so that's useful like literally, uh, what? Um, okay, so this is not good. Sorry, my mouse is like all over the show. I'm just going to have to almost thinking about. Okay, so. Uh, like it's clicking everything and jumping. Like my curse is just jumping around all. What the hell? Uh, can't select anything probably crashed okay I haven't crashed Firefox is not happy okay I've got focus back that was weird uh, anyway so uh, version one we can talk about UADs but I, but I know version four is actually better because it provides um, like a random identifier um, so let's go ahead with um, with this. Okay. Oh, my mouse has really given me a lot of grief. Uh, you'll see that it will create a tool. Just not exist. And now we need to open the main.rs file and in. Add the following code. Initialize the database that has not yet been initialized. Okay, I can get behind this. I think, you know, and for whatever reason, you know, I VS Code and Firefox are really angry with each other. <laughs> like either, only one of them can have the cursor at the same time. I think that my, uh, I love being able to just click copy uh, on the, okay. So main.rs file, let's open that up. And uh, where does it want a, uh, actually probably in, If you are still here, I sincerely apologize. My whole computer is cooking, I think. And um, it's having no fun at all. Um, so hopefully I can, it will calm down. And um, So the other thing is these, um, I need these imports. And I'll save those. 
Okay, so now if I build, I'm just checking that people are still, oh yeah, still streaming. And of look, my, my counter thing says that there are still viewers. So you have, bear, you're just still there, which is impressive. If you uh, cargo shuttle run. Uh, oh, maybe I should actually, in my database connections, connect to the database that it said that I should. Because then I can get this nifty thing. Like, ah, look, and it's executed my um, my SQL, which is useful. And um, I'm just going to open up a new editor sort of a scratch window and see if I can copy out this Ugh. problem with it being inside a terminal is that uh, it's actually on across spanning multiple lines it's not so complicated though because it's essentially connecting to port 1753 or 17535 and everything else is just Postgres. Oh. <laughs> My system honestly wants to self-destruct. It's like, it's late at night. It's 20 past, well, it's like, uh, you've, been, you've been at this for an hour. You need to stop. And, um, Uh, maybe we won't worry about database connections um, for now. So um, we can't inspect our database. So that's sad. Um, get status. Uh, get add everything. Oh. We've got a feature and that's our database. Uh, films, films, not movies. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I've called it movie DB the entire time, and uh, you may have noticed that if you run the project and go to version root, you get a four hundred four. Well, actually, I'm not running it, so. <laughs> uh, so to run it, I. 404 so guess how to do it config hello world add this line containing this piece of code to in the main what service version ah okay inside main api and then I've got shuttle source main. And so here's my hello world service. And that is a hello world. But I don't see there being a version anywhere. So but what it's recommending we do is go down here i'll have to scroll up quite far so that you can see it add a service and another one it's going to be called version uh version though it doesn't is not in scope so i don't really get where it's magically going to appear from so i'm just going to add a new service and it's going to be called version we're going to return static string and we're going to be called like zero beta 
Now it's, I don't know if that's what it, uh, but now if we run our thing, we can actually run again. Uh, I refuse to connect. Come on, hurry up. It's compiling again. It takes so long because it's Rust. Um, passing a database pool to the endpoint. Starting beta. Okay, so that was hard to see down the right, down the bottom. But actually, we got beta out. Oh, it's because I'm also asking for um, dash i. So we get beta. And maybe I should also finish with um, one nicety, which is to finish with r dash n. And th that will uh, mean that I get a new line when I. Oh, actually cool things but anyway let's uh let's move forward so what i'm trying to do is so just after the phone with linux show database let's add the following code create a database pool so we can actually use the database that we created and uh wait a minute i would initially Oh, okay, so essentially we're rebinding <laughs> variable shadowing. There is the docs again. So we are rebinding the variable name pool uh, using the old one. And the... Uh, so now we can change it. Before we... End it. So app data. In the config object down the bottom, we can auto uh, update our service to uh, have an app data, and that app data will be our database pool executing a query and returning a result. Ah, here we are. Now it turns out that dash version over in um, the code, it, they actx web data secret. So actually, says in order to call the version or like connect with the version um, uh, la, 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 to, <laughs> to call this endpoint you need an active database connection so that doesn't seem super significant because we're not actually accessing the database but it turns out that this is um, what is uh, happening I am going to my data my computer is really unhappy it's doing a lot of work and it's just very very angry with me uh, I'm going to use data that way I can pull actually I'm just going to bring in web and then I can remove this uh, some of these liar things and the other thing is a format document so um, great now Ah, interesting. So this is kind of boring and it says this is a good, it's like I agree, it is kind of boring. So what we're going to do now is actually go out to the database and discover like what our actual um, um, we're going to actually go and inspect what our actual database, like uh, sorry, actual version is. So we can return um, what should we do? Uh, let's call the result, but I just think like DB. Um, we get a row, um, and it will be a result of string and. See, uh, okay. Now again, I'm going to not follow the instructions, which is useful. Um, and that is if we get an OK and we get some string and we call uh, SQLX uh, query. And what else? What's the rest of the code that we need? Oh, naturally, Firefox has decided that to implode. Um, so what do we need to do there? Mm 
Okay, Firefox is with me again. I'm going to copy this across. Delete the lines we don't need. And I'm going to type out the stuff that, uh, that I would have done differently. So they recommend that we uh, create a result object and then pull it out. Uh, query scalar. So we want one specific thing and then we're going to select the version. Turn, so there's some version function. So that's actually the Postgres version, is it not? Um, and then we want to fetch one. And the executor is going to be the uh, the database connection that we've got, and then we'll await. Uh, so if we get a row, then we are going to uh, return the, so the, the row, by the way, is a string. And maybe I should have just used the code that they gave me. Um, now I am, am I returning a result myself? No, I'm just returning. So I changed the, I was a bit confused because it's a different um, so I can return this and otherwise so we just return row uh, otherwise we've had some error and why is that like this maybe I'll just use the code that they gave me because it seems to be that the types that are being provided by SQLX are different uh, depending on how you call it because you can see that the type inference engine has said that row is going to be a unit here which is not a string so um, so I'm either going to return back the result which is some version string or I'm going to say return some Unknown. I don't know the vision. And let's try that. So apologies for running around um, in circles. Oh, that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, we're now going to, I've got my, currently we are still running uh, the beta version. So <laughs> we're now going to connect to a database and figure out like which version of Postgres it's running apparently um, or we're going to call uh, now we don't have th anything live and now I've got Tokyo we are running Postgres 11 <laughs> and uh, so and in fact we were able to call version in uh, 700 microseconds which is happy which is fine and um, cool so up here, I feel like running deploy, and you can call it yourself. Dirty is not allowed. So Shuttle is actually saying, hey man, you've got some code here that you haven't committed. I need committed code. I need you to commit. And uh, versioning. So let's deploy that to live. <laughs> like let's deploy it to the public interface. So now you can go and curl this yourself, uh, like while I'm speaking to you. And I'll just pull that up again, because it's been a little bit of time. And uh, you can go, I've got, but I need a slightly different input. And you can check uh, which version I've got. Uh, once this is once this compiles, and everyone is going to respond in the comments with like which version that they've actually got, and uh, 
the come on come on come on i want i i want everyone in the comments to be like yeah we're all running postgres 11 here in the cloud <laughs> um so i'm gonna sort of skip past all this we are running so far behind time i don't know if you've noticed but it's actually i've got like 75 minutes on the clock and i don't have a front end i don't have anything we've been having um some good times though um look at that <laughs> the next step it says we should deploy it into shuttle so that's what we're doing uh now i am so there is a uh, a comment uh that shuttle seems kind of great and i totally agree like i'm quite sold um he says as someone who has never like deployed a production thing to shuttle uh it um seems very well thought out it's currently in beta uh and uh, yeah, i do recommend signing up if i had a like a referral code or whatever i would give it to you so if you're watching the recording um like check the description and uh and ivan ceo of shuttle if you're watching the stream you know you can just flick me a note just flick me an email we're good you can just get me a referral code i can get on the you know you've got an amazing system here uh i'm uh be stoked to support it and uh thank you very much for everyone for sticking with me while i've been having technical issues it's a real shame that my computer which has 32 gigabytes of ram and like how many cores i don't even know is uh still having trouble getting uh keeping everything up um and yeah and, and even <laughs> apparently the server from shadow to rs should be postgres 14.8 so that is what we want uh and by the way there's the password so probably should have uh, just skipped that um so i'm gonna curl local <laughs> i'm gonna call the guys https uh movie db the shuttle our uh, shuttle what apps shuttle app dot rs slash version 14.8 hey hey <laughs> it turns out that uh that the thing was right um so that's and like postgres 14.8 oh that's really cool okay i mean fine uh and there's my password again okay great so this command also works shuttle resource list um now i should probably go to update my connection string in there but i don't suspect that too many people will uh are going to um bother so i'm going to skip this i think or maybe i won't um vs code what is short i've got rust analyzer i've got code llb so i may as well give it a go i kind of don't want to um so I, it's recommending that i create a launch.json file and then add uh, attached to shuttle it, apparently all i need to do is upload this and something will kind of magically work um so let's go to put a breakpoint in our version endpoint okay i must admit that i am quite skeptical of this is going to work um so to add a breakpoint uh Flash red here. Now run the project with cart car shuttle run. I feel like I'm just it's an ad for shuttle. Like what is this? Um, okay, we're good. Um, now curl dash i so we get more information. And it's and HTTPS. Oh, sorry, it is the local host version. We're not deploying. Okay, wrong version number. 
invalid string parse error. That's actually not what we wanted to see. Um, let me check that I've done something right. So cog shuttle deploy cargo shuttle run and then press F5. Operation not permitted. Hmm. Okay. So my suspicions were slightly correct. I'm going to flag the debug experience. This didn't quite work for me uh, for a bunch of reasons. I suspect most of them relate to the fact that um, I, it's cursed. <laughs> Live demos are cursed is the, is the problem. Um, and so I'm just going to skip debugging. And uh, but we do want logs, so we'll add tracing to cargo.toml of our shuttle crate. Um, and now we can add uh, some tracing information uh, so to our main function. So this is in version. The reason why we're, by the way, the reason why we're inside version so much is presumably because we need to, because it's actually interacting with the database and calling a database function. We can, you could do something fun like we could select one plus one or do something else. Um, but again, I should probably stick to the script. Every time I've gone off the script and done my own thing instead of following the instructions, I've ended up. Uh, making things worse <laughs> except I'm just gonna cheat I'm just gonna uh, make a small plug for one other thing which is this instrumentation uh, macro which actually provides uh, even more information in the logging output and um, uh, it provides a visualization of like what's going on and the length of time that it takes for the version to uh, to actually run because it creates what is known as a span. Um, uh, so what do I need to do now? Now I'm a, actually a little bit concerned because I continue. I'm now running request parse error invalid header to provided now. Oh, you know what I'm trying to do? I was trying to connect with HTTPS on localhost. And that's why I started confusing myself. Uh, I am locally running Postgres 11 on the cloud or running Postgres 14. Um, I can run curl-i just fine down here. And um, fine. Okay, so what we're actually looking for is... <coughs> Um, we need to actually run cargo shuttle again. Cargo shuttle run recompiles, and again, if uh... <laughs> yes, <laughs> we've got other people accessing this thing live. I love it so much. It's just wonderful, uh, and I will immediately hide the banner because it's proven. It's like done its job. Uh, it's also now just completely in the way. Okay, so I'm going to access curl again. Okay, that's on localhost, but what we're actually looking for is this line here, info API, info API underscore shuttle getting version, which is the uh, exactly here and the um, the API shuttle is the name of the crate, I think. So we go to cargo.toml, it's API dash shuttle. And so it's just getting translated to underscores. Um, and what else? 
now that I've been talking for over an hour, in fact, you know, nearly an hour and a half, I've discovered something has happened to my voice, and that is it's become very hard to talk. I um, I didn't think that, uh, I didn't remember, it's been a while since I've been on stream, and I uh, forgot that eventually, like I should have got a, got some water or something, and uh, oh, this is cool. So what? Uh, anyway, so my 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 voice is. We may have to call it early. Uh, it's getting <clears throat> pretty close to midnight, and also my my throat is kind of like burning now. Um, Cargo Watch is a command which will monitor your progress, your project for changes on localhost or like it just changes on the file system and then we'll execute a cargo command. We're asking cargo watch to execute, which is the dash x, dash dash x shuttle run. So it's saying we should chest it out, chest this out by making a change and say, well, okay. Um, what change should we make? How about not like, what is some other select query? I can't remember if Postgres has like, automatic support for a uh, for a, like a rand function <laughs> we could be a actually we're just gonna we're just gonna be select beta and uh, we're gonna be version beta from postgres and this is by the way a, a single quote in sql is significant. Uh, it means that we need, uh, it means that we're passing a string to the select query here. Um, so if I call localhost and say check what version failed to connect naturally because um, life is pain. And let's try one more time. Okay, beta from PG. And so I actually still need, presumably need to pass in my um, CRLF, like which is the, the something something line feed um carriage return line feed because it's like a physical typewriter returning the carriage to the start of the line and then going one line down that's why we uh beta from pastegres and then we get our next extra new line in there as well so that's super um interestingly as like we went through anyway it's just interesting that the the way that it's printed on the screen it's not escaped it's actually like the actual characters um but that's enough playing let's go back to our uh workshop moving inputs into a library oh gosh i wish i didn't have to do this we need to add a dependency to our api shuttle cargo.toml so we can do this rather than the following one Uh, okay, I feel so. What it's doing, we've got this movie DB um, database, and we are currently working in our API folder. It wants us to work in our lib. We've got a shuttle thing. Our shuttle is like what's interacting on the what we're deploying to the web. We want to create a library, uh, and we've got an add function in there which doesn't do very much. Um, but inside our shuttle dependency, we need to actually link the two. And so that's what that is. So, uh, and now, uh, it should have actually just rebuilt itself because, yeah, it's doing that now. So this should not work. Currently, I get a connection refused. And uh, once the compilation is finished, it will automatically deploy because I'm still running uh cargo watch copy the following code into health well, i could just will not kind of just rename ah uh, i see what it's what it's wanting to do so we can now it's back live uh, so what it wants me to do is pull out the two calls like the two services that I'm using in my main function into a refactor them into a new file called health.rs and inside health.rs I want a new file 
Uh, interestingly, yeah, so it, it will kind of still work, but now our there's nothing for our um, service to connect to. Our open API lib source, API lib. Wait, 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 wait. I probably pushed this in the wrong place. API shuttle source main. API shuttle source main. Copy. I'm a, I'm suspicious that this is right. Ah, uh, yeah, I did put this in the right place, the wrong, the wrong place. So this should actually be over in API lib source. Create a new file called health drive. So we've moved, mm, okay. Now the reason why I think I'm a bit confused is that, well, AI had it in the wrong place, but uh, I need to also, it's not telling me to add the dependencies. <laughs> there we go, there are the dependencies. So again, I should follow the instructions. Now I won't need to recompile all of these because they are actually being, uh, because the comp compiler is making use of the workspace. Uh, that we enabled before. One thing I haven't done is this pub mod health open API lib source. API lib source lib.rs. And then up the top, are you sure? Ah, okay, so in the lib file, we need, we get in the health, but this one here, it, these are in the wrong place. Now this is all the, and we inserted tracing instrument ourselves. Um, hmm, let's carry on. The, finally, to make the compiler happy, let's import this at the top of our health.rs file. Okay, so this is kind of what I thought we were not gonna get work. Note that we use, we're not using any shuttle dependency in this crate. So shuttle was only in, in. Okay, now that we're using the endpoints, now that we have our endpoints in a library, we can use them in our main open API shuttle source main arrays. Oh, I'm so confused. My brain's going. We remove the endpoints codes that we copied before and get rid of the use statements as well. Mm, okay, I've already done that. And do you know what to do next? We need to, ah, okay. So we're going to use uh, API underscore lib and then uh, the health stuff. Um, and we can actually just push asterisks in there and then we will get things back and we'll get our hello world hello world and our version we probably shouldn't do it that way but uh yeah in fact they've suggested a better way which is that we should actually like manually pull in the uh, the parts of the library that we want and um that's fine okay so we should now get a, we should now be able to compile and use of undeclared module web. Okay, I can fix that. Aha! So before, I don't know if you remember, I decided that I wanted to simplify the word. Uh, I wanted to get rid of I wanted to shorten the line, so I was like, oh, you know what I'll do? I will get rid of um, some, I'll do a manual import. And <laughs> that has killed the thing. Okay, so this is Actix web, colon, colon, web. Uh, cunningly, they're actually very cunning. The people, the designers of this workshop um, have done a really, really good job at creating documentation that's extremely easy 
to like very very thorough and very be probably battle tested quite well and uh i'm just completely in awe at how flawless this is um now it's telling me ah now now it's working but i still get some warnings around unused imports and that's because back in the original one in shuttle uh, i don't need this get macro anymore and there's my postgres connection details skipping can or anything things and now i can actually curl like yeah. what where did i deploy this to oh oh it recompiled uh okay good 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 maybe we, we're out of beta maybe maybe we're out of beta so uh we're gonna be on we're on gamma now I'm gonna get my Greek, uh, uh, my Greek letters, very badly wrong very soon, but uh, that's okay. Oh, so now I need to commit some code. So if I go to uh, my editor again and go up to here, get status. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I need to commit. And the commit message that we're going to call is that we refactored into a library. So and we're not pushing anywhere. So now we have committed, we can deploy this back to um to the web so now once we have compiled the question will be can you access the new version uh come on come on come on interestingly we get all of the debugging output from uh from shuttle which is quite handy so we okay great so again here is the command uh bringing up on screen if you run that now uh so it's https and this is uh, movie db shuttle app dot rs just port 80 you should get gamma and this is actually a call to a live Postgres database. <laughs> and they it called a select statement <laughs> that returned a, a fixed string. So I actually was able to um, exercise essentially the entire stack. Now we want a health point. Uh, so it should be, uh, okay, this is pretty easy. So what it wants us to do is this is an exercise in the workshop where we we're given this task. Can you have dash uh, slash health? So I can add an endpoint here, health, and should two hundred with a cushion header name version containing the version. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm gonna cheat and look at the um, look at the look at the things because we're so far behind. Um, <laughs> eventually i do want to go to bed it is midnight uh now so i don't need get here anymore in fact i don't need that one and i'm so i have my health endpoint and i'm going to return some http response so we're doing it man we're going to do it manually uh, we are creating our response object and we've got this uh static method okay which is a 200 presumably with a header uh version i'm gonna do x version because i really want to comply with the actual spec um <laughs> and event header and this is gonna be x uh, thank you uh and who should we thank we should thank uh everyone live 
<laughs> everyone live love us subscribe or something <laughs> that was my plug to say um you should you should subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the stream i uh whether or not you're live or on the um you should configure the service and you should uh it would be um really really neat to see you in the future and so if you do click that subscribe button uh it's a really it's great for my stats again and it means that you're much more likely to be able to uh, see the content that i create over time as well so let's go back to shuttle source main oh i found a typo there we go there's a space there and then there should be a space there api shuttle source main.rs and this is what it should look like uh we need to include a we've got service hello world and we are being recommended to just have a health one it's also saying that we should just delete our version i quite like my version endpoint and also it recommends that we should delete our oh delete all of them we only have one left <laughs> Uh, so now again we will need to compile uh, sorry uh, get status well, sorry not compile we will need to commit our working code and we added a new feature and that is a health endpoint now if uh I run, I don't need to do, I'm just going to redeploy. And this changes. So, that's now health. So, I'm going to go check the comments. Hey, nice. We've got Gamma live. Um, from myself as well as uh, from the other people in the audience so that's just absolutely fantastic and um, now we should see health now health is going to be a harder one to check and I will tell you uh, I wonder if you can guess why the reason is it's probably going to return a 204 with no content possibly a 200 actually probably a 200 because I said okay uh, so So this is the version, we should see gamma again. And then if I ping health, I get my thank you to everyone who's here live. I really appreciate it. Um, X version is gamma, but there is no content. And um, just had a very quick question, like which font are you using? I love how people that are, um, <laughs> our geeks are always really interested in coding fonts so the coding font is called input mono um, let's uh, go back to the script okay so now we have made a couple of different iterations on our thing uh, using the configure method it turns so in order to make we can use the configure function so what this is saying is that we can actually supply the configure takes a um so it's got all of these services chained together but we can refactor to um use the, the like a it, we can specify so a closure or a uh, an anonymous function and call the service on some configure option on object rather than on the config. I don't really know why we need to do that. Um, uh, so I'm just going to skip that, I think. 
And not sure if you noticed, but we've got the pub crew this function. Oh, so there's more refactoring. Um, I have just hit midnight. And so I am going to skip that. I'm going to skip testing. So testing is nice. Testing is good. Um, films endpoints. Aha! Let's start by creating a films module in a similar way with the health module. Okay. New file films. .rs. And... Uh, uh, over here we've got pub mod health and we need pub mod films. Oh, do we want to add it to the link projects? No. Maybe. Yes. Um, can I guess to create all the endpoints? Tip where scope solution. I'm going to cheat. Uh, so the i'm going to go into films and then i'm going to go up here and i'm going to get all of my responses these are all dummies right so we've got okay and finish we just were sending 200s back um and <clears throat> the i wonder if this is enough uh so this is kind of cool we're, we're actually getting a service that we are uh, doing a config are taking it and there's that nice uh, factory method where we um, and over here in open thing uh, lib.rs open uh, actually I can take this down for a moment um, I'm trying to go faster. Um, hopefully this is still somewhat understandable. So I've got config app data, this thing here inside a, and I've got health, which I've pulled in directly, but I should also be able to, I'm just going to take away Oh, interesting. I wonder if I can still call configure Okay, I get, I get it. Okay, so now I kind of have a somewhat of an understanding of like what what why on earth you'd bother with um, with pushing all like doing all this refactoring that I skipped over with the health endpoints. Okay, you'll notice that we are uh, in the shuttle code. We are just dealing with shuttle stuff, uh, but in our library, and so essentially we need to wire everything together ourselves but what we actually want to expose from the library is a specific service that knows how to configure itself and so that's what these service functions enable they enable you to export a service builder or as it takes some config object and modifies it to um, to essentially build all of the routes or all of the routes depending on if you're American or European or <laughs> British <laughs> Um, now, and now we need to upload all of our films. Um, I really want to do this. I also really want to go to bed. Um, uh, I did actually create, I didn't, I oh know I didn't and get this one. I don't think. Uh, I, yeah, I did install this. This is the one that had three and a half million people. Um, so you can create a file on the root of your project. And go away, go away. And so that's all good. And now just open it and click on the send request link next to X request. Send request. Connection was, re was rejected. Um, this is so local localhost 8000. Now, 
I am I not running localhost? Oh no, I'm not running a localhost at this. I'm not at all. <clears throat> okay, so I'm on the right. I get a warning, but not an error. So that's a win. And the, the warning is that I don't have my hello world function. So maybe I should actually keep my hello world. Um, so we're compiling and then eventually we'll run. Once we have a live thing, I can then load up my Postgres database that I have running as well um, and submit HTTP stuff with it. Um, because of all of these references to the host and the film IDs and whatever else. Okay, so I now have a live thing. Send request. Okay, great. Oh, that's, that's, it, it, it all worked. How wonderful. And uh, that is the health endpoint that I have been um, talking about, which is really nice. Uh, which is what we built. And what about if I change this to version? Send this request, I get gamma. That's cool. Okay, so that's something I did not know as well. Uh, learning a lot. Now we w we are sending, so we're issuing a post request to films. Create a film object. Um, if you want, you can post in your own post and you can update it. So death in Venice uh, director in the updated version is uh, from 10 years later. Now we can go and issue a request on all of our films. This isn't actually going to do anything because our films handlers are all empty. Even for the post one. So I wonder if I skipped something. Uh, however, you can see that we're actually getting stuff um, done, which I think is really cool. And... Yeah, let's save and commit. So we've done this before a few times. We um, get add and we can have our feature. And now we can uh, run cargo shuttle deploy. And you can actually go and update localhost 8000 to um, HTTPS uh, MovieDB shuttle app shuttle app dot rs and that will presumably work um, models okay so in our dependencies so we are running through, so now we want films, we, we don't really do anything because they don't return any data. We need to create a model for our films as we want to share the model between our API and front end crates, we'll need to use the shared crate for this. The shared crate is a library crate. This means that it's used by others. Let's import the dependency in the cargo.toml file of our API lib crate. So api-lib is this one here. And we want a uh, a reference to shared, which is right down here, down the bottom, which we actually haven't touched. Uh, there's nothing in there except for the boilerplate that um, we created. Now, in the module called models in the shared crate. So create a new file, models.rs. And uh, add in the following code. And we could make it more complicated for seconds. And now remove everything from lib.rs file. So this is the boilerplate code that the cargo creates and then uh, replace it with pub models. And then also add some dependencies. So, and specifically we want the UUID crate and, uh, and chrono for time. So, so we will be able to specify um, interestingly, they use the V4 here. I don't know if you were still part of the stream about probably 45 minutes to an hour ago, uh, but they were using version one for a different purpose. Um, 
and I create a model for the post endpoint. So I actually, I think that I can update my API to HTTP and add a new film and is it put or post? I wonder why, okay. It should be able to, oh, so the syntax is that you have like a triple commented and then send um, Lord of the Rings. Again, it doesn't actually do anything yet. We haven't got any persistence, but um, we get a 200 OK from the public web. So um, that's cool. So we don't need to pass ID credit which is generated by the API. So let's create the new model for that. Um, all right. And where do I do that? In I shouldn't. I should. <laughs> I I keep jumping out of the. Um, <laughs> I keep jumping out of the actual uh, script and kind of doing my own thing, which is not a sensible idea. I strongly recommend that you uh, go and follow the instructions. Uh, you have much more success at staying on time than I have. I'm about an hour behind, I expect. Um, I kind of also feel, though, that I've done a good job at explaining what I've been doing as I've been doing it. Um, but I'll allow you to um, be the judge. Okay, so now I can deploy it if I wanted to. But uh, serialize. So Surday is a serialization system. It has a um, a kind of an internal model, like an internal data a data model for being able to understand objects that um, are being sent between two systems. Um, and so it provides both a serialization and deserialization um, section, and like its own internal. Uh, in memory layout for things. Let's add certain dependencies of a shared crate. Okay, I can do that. And I will also include certain JSON. Oh, I've got a couple of comments that I have forgotten or neglected. And then there are. <laughs> hey! <laughs> the shuttle team has said hi. <laughs> it's so awesome to see you. Uh, okay, so Surde is version one. Are we going to do uh, Surde JSON? There's also one point. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Working with JSON and API, I need to bring Surde JSON and API libcrate. Aha. So I mucked up again. Tim, you need to follow the instructions. Otherwise, you're really going to bet yourself into a lot of pain. Okay. So I need to open up the API lib. So API. Uh, uh, the name lib here, by the way, I think is slightly confusing because the name, the folder name is distinct from the package name, which causes me confusion uh, <laughs> at least. Now, I'm, I'm curious actually why they aren't using, there's a, a couple of features that I would have expected that they would, um, that they would use. Uh, and I would actually recommend that they don't use 1.0, uh, you, uh, just use one um, for now and that will work fine. Now we can uh, go back to the models and add the, uh, the, the derives. So if you look inside the shared crate, uh, we did actually include one feature which is derive, which is, it sort of teaches, uh, a, a, a derive teaches Rust, the Rust compiler, how to, uh, write its own code. Uh, so kind of magically, can you please derive a couple of um, traits for me? And 
Specifically, the ones that are important right now are serialize and deserialize. But you can see on the documentation that we're actually being asked for more. Uh, some really useful ones. So debug enables the, the struct to be, or type, to be printed to the screen. Uh, it's primarily intended for developers though, not your end users. Uh, clone enables your uh, struct to be copied and pa probably partial equality and partial uh, ord. There we go. Partial equality and equality are up here that in, uh, work together. Uh, let me explain the distinction between partial and full. So partial equality is the trait that works very closely together with the equals equals operator, like the comparison operator. Are these two things equal? And if you ask Rust, are two floating point numbers equal with double equals <laughs> characters, you'll get an answer. Even though some in fact, in some cases, quite a few bit patterns with inside a floating point number represent not a number or, or things that are mathematically undefined. And in fact, in the specification mean that even if you have exactly the same zeros and ones in exactly the same place in two different floating point numbers, they are not allowed to be compare as equal. And so partial equality exists to enable some types, specifically floating points, to have some bit patterns for which equality is undefined, but still work with the syntax. And so equality, the EQ, is a, uh, it's just a marker trait. It does, there are no extra methods. It's just a marker trait that means it's there, we have full equality over all bit patterns of the type. So partial ord and ord do a similar thing, but for uh, asking whether or not there's is ordinal. So an ordinal number is something between zero and infinity. Uh, it's something that has like a greater than or less than. So we can ask for any film, is this greater than or less than um, by ID. Uh, we'll go in like name order. Uh, UUIDs, by the way, are sortable uh down to the millisecond and then the uh, at the millisecond level they oh actually i'm confusing uuids and ulids uh uuids are just uh, version four are random so um essentially they are random uh, on all versions but l formally they're not um, it's just version four that um, provide randomness which is what we have enabled in our features so i'll just stop muttering <laughs> eventually get to the end of this tutorial. Holy heck. <laughs> okay, so deserialize, uh, debug, clone, partial equality, partial ord, 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 default. Okay, for both of my types, added more traits, common practice libraries, and some of them to avoid issues with using them. See the orphan rule. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't want to explain the orphan rule right now. Um, what this is saying is that we are going to, I say I don't want to explain it, and then I go and explain it. What the heck is the orphan rule? Well, the orphan rule says that you cannot implement foreign types, foreign traits on foreign types. You can only implement foreign traits on types that you own. So essentially, you sometimes see the standard library essentially being duct typed or like, sorry, monkey patched is the term that like, for example, a Rubyist will use. And, uh, we can extend the methods that our types provide. Now we can kind of give them extra superpowers that we don't actually need because someone down the line might need them. And it's kind of irritating to do that. Um, so uh, if, uh, with the post you may change in the future, I, uh, okay. So what this is saying, we are gonna create like a database abstraction layer, which I'm like, oh, come on, I want more. I want my films, I wanna upload my films, man. Um, let's create a film repository folder in the API uh, lib source and in a moderate okay <laughs> to keep things simple they say <laughs> this isn't simple uh, we're creating a trait um, so we got our film repository again I can't believe that they're using the term films instead of movies when I've obviously called my thing movies DB gosh um, 
uh, folder and then add a module RS file. So the module system in Rust is kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> I mean that with love. Um, it is a, a pain to understand, but it was kind of the best that they could create in the time available to, before they needed to um, sort of get 1.0 out. Uh, you have two ways of defining modules. One is within a um, uh, inside a directory that contains a mod.rs file or slightly annoyingly you can also have specific files that are themselves modules and uh, the ins and outs of why this is, is kind of uh, like again a slightly annoying um, the other thing that's probably a mistake was to um, to actually distinguish between modules and crates, um, but that is well in the past now. So we get this thing around how we need it. We've got a couple of type definitions or trait definitions that we needed to, um, um, oh, it's saying we've got some compiler errors because we've got some, we need to be able to send our thing across threads. And also in our, I'll just save that one. Uh, this mod film dot we we have a problem and that is we, we're adding functions that are ostensibly asynchronous but actually rust can't encode async traits in the uh in the language it doesn't exist so we actually require a, another dependency And this is this uh, this async dash trait dependency, um, and we'll also bring in UUID there. And okay, I think we're getting quite close to being able to save some of these films, including, as I saw before. Um, uh, Lord of the Rings, which is it's quite nice to see a little bit of New Zealand, you know, like like touching the rest of the world. I'm always I'm always a fan. Uh, so this syntax here looks a bit strange. We are uh, getting a an this we are async trait the async trait crate exposes a macro that is called the same thing. So this is a way to be able to essentially refer to a specific macro in the context of uh, uh, refer to a specific macro without needing to import it we could have used async trait and then we were going to access to it anyway blah blah blah, blah. okay mod is file so far i wanted to create them, just use a file and see okay so uh, I'm skipping the, I'm not going to read all of the stuff anymore because again, I'm now it's half past midnight. We're getting close to call a film. Okay, so we have our trait and now we are going to um, uh, now we're actually going to have like a specific implementation uh, for Postgres. So again, so then the motivation here is that we want to be able to provide the ability for us to um, uh, essentially move uh, away from Postgres if we think that another data store is going to be more useful. Yay. So inside the editor, So our implementation is going to be uh, uh, this and um, we're going to implement just a, we're going to give ourselves a new method. I'm surprised, so we take ownership of pool here. I mean, that makes sense, but I'm, okay. Uh, we could have also implemented into, but I can't be bothered. Um, now we need to implement the actual trait. So we give ourselves a constructor uh, and now we are writing our SQL. And it looks like this is really yucky. <laughs> it's probably a better way to explain it. But uh, the, uh, 
Um, la, 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 la. The you, you you look at this and you think, oh gosh, I remember PHP. Some people we coded in PHP. We added SQL statements inside our code. I wanted to say, and 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 this is horrific. Uh, because essentially you, you could have made a typo. You could have done a whole bunch of other problems with your SQL. And it turns out uh, Rust has a few tricks and this SQLX trait uh, uh, dependency has some very sophisticated tricks for being able to actually type check and <laughs> your, your, the, the, the raw SQL like at compile time. And I think this is one of the most amazing things about the the Rust language that it enables you to create these uh, these libraries that are extremely powerful. And in, in fact, from memory, this uh, SQLX library is actually uh, it sort of compiles SQL and checks that all of the types that you are providing are. Um, are valid for the database that you're actually connecting to and that, that they it all kind of works together and the wiring is all done. Uh, so you won't have problems like, oh, well, I'm probably going to be showing up here. But if I were to save this, um, I probably would get a compile error. Now I haven't actually built, um, I haven't run shuttle run in a while. Um, I get an exit one, I probably, Oh, well, one thing is that way back here, uh, it didn't want one. It wanted one like this. So I should uh, run to one. Now, while this is compiling, I've got a couple of questions that I, um, that I should get to. <laughs> so the author of the workshop, ah, I love this. So I saw, by the way, if you're still on the stream, hopefully you are. So this is an old comment now, but uh, I absolutely love this workshop. I um, am literally, I haven't done any prep for this stream. I'm just kind of doing it. Um, and I have, there, there have been no issues at all. Uh, and uh, I am just absolutely pumped. Uh, and I really want to get this done. I know that is now half past 12 at night. I should really go to bed. Uh, I've got um, kids to look after in the morning. Um, but I think that I can do better. Now, I had another question. Is like, did you get any water before because you were complaining about having a sore throat? No, my throat is actually burning. And um, eventually, I think tomorrow I'm probably going to lose my voice. Uh, so <laughs> uh, and I love SQLX, totally do. And um, there's a question here about, in the film struct, <clears throat> would you use a, st a string slice, a string, or a cow? Now, uh, oh gosh, sorry, it is after midnight. Um, let me find the model. So I, so I would use string here because the uh, uh, because essentially you need an owned type. So the other the alternatives string slices you can't have a string slice into Postgres. Doesn't make sense. Um, the essentially Postgres is going to give you you can actually do zero copy in process stuff if you write a Postgres extension uh, if you use the PGRX. Um, extension framework also written in, like for writing Postgres extensions in Rust. Uh, it provides zero copy. So Postgres just gives you back a pointer uh, and your extension can just manipulate the data on the fly. Um, but that doesn't make sense um, over the wire. You can't really do that. Um, a cow also doesn't make sense because you're never going to have a, there will never be a time where you may or may not have a borrowed reference. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the time available to really flesh the distinction between all of those three types out. Uh, but essentially, because we are dealing with um, with uh, things that are essentially 
uh, passed to us from the database that we need to ensure that we control the entire life cycle over. Uh, we're always going to have orange types. We're always going to use a full string. There is the possibility uh, that you might see something like this or a box uh, um, of like, let's say a U8. <clears throat> yeah, it wouldn't be that, it would be a slice. So um, this is very unlikely to be given back to you, but it's possible that in some instances you will get a pointer to, so a box is a smart pointer to some data that lives on the heap or actually it's close enough to be right. And, uh, but it doesn't allow you to expand or contract the, um, the, 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 the text data that you're actually referring to. And that's because it doesn't have a, a capacity field or, um, and so it's actually, it only has the length um, and has no ability to, to, to grow it. Um, uh, a box of U8 is a pointer to some some sequence of raw bytes where you have even fewer guarant like fewer guarantees in the type system. You don't even have the the, the text encoding. <laughs> it's nice to see you too, Stephen. Um, <laughs> Yeah, okay, well, and this is a comment both from the author of the, the workshop that it did take more than two hours. And uh, where am I now? I am. I still haven't loaded my films into the database. Once I do, um, uh, there will be a live thing on shuttles, uh, on <laughs> shuttles, uh, in shuttle.rs, uh, and I'll bring up the web, um, uh, the command to execute right now. This actually works, this is live. And once we've got some films loaded, uploaded, uh, I will um, probably say goodnight. Hopefully I'll be able to wind down and get some sleep. Um, this is, don't forget to add the necessary imports. I saw a compiler warning about these, but I don't actually remember where I should put them. Um, okay. So I need these up here. Uh, some errors have detailed explanations. Doesn't satisfy a film from, oh gosh. Okay, so we've got a trait bound error, which is unfortunate because this is possibly something that I have made a mistake on that I'm not going to be able to debug now because I don't really have the mental energy to do that. And I apologize for getting wedged. Is shuttle runtime missing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's just try a cargo build without shuttle. Um, cargo, cargo. <clears throat> it doesn't satisfy the, um, the, the trait bounds. So we probably need to build uh, I wonder if I can, ah, I did clone the original, like, so the actual repository itself and I can cheat. So if I go into the lib and then I go to source and then I go film repository and then I go to postgres film repository, I'm just going to copy all of that across and bang in there. <laughs> I still get a type error. Now that means oh, maybe my mod was wrong. Ah, the mod was where I needed to, to use things. So here that actually I'm uh, using things in here. So if I async track, async track. And it's possible, hopefully he says, that this will compile, I still get trait bounds errors, which is really unfortunate. I was hoping that that would mostly fix it. Okay, I can't fix it now, 
but and so i'm actually gonna say good night <laughs> Um, I'm terribly sorry for uh, not being able to load things up. I wonder, though, if I can be a little bit sneaky. I've got my name here, MovieDB, and I'm still logged in to Shuttle. I could go into the other... the actual other thing <laughs> the other thing <laughs> oops um sorry and uh where am i i'll go uh so I'm streams and then I'm doing my, uh, what am I doing? I am doing full stack workshop. And then I need to go into dev uh, BCN workshop dry run. And now I should be able to run cargo shuttle deploy. Uh, not found. Huh. Uh, okay. It turns out that the there's a little bit of hidden magic that and it's probably related to secrets so that um that shuttle has stored has tucked away inside my uh my version. So inside but I, um, yeah, I, I actually, you know what? I should go to bed. <laughs> I should go to bed. Uh, this has been like the a ridiculously fun couple of hours. And I have really, so we got super close. We got to, we got 20 parts down. We were very, very close to uh, finishing the back end. Um, and I hope that you make your way all the way to uh, to the 25 and uh, and have lots and lots of fun because uh, this has been a great experience. And um, again, the URL is, I'll just post in the comments. Uh, it should actually be in the description of whichever video that you are here. But, um, oh, look, I just, <laughs> I just got, okay, 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 fine. We will... Um, Fine, I'll try it. Fine. Okay. <sighs> ah, project with that name already exists. Gosh. Uh, no, we'll go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to wrap up there. This has been a heaps. This has been a really wonderful thing. I am going to see you later. And goodbye to all of you. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I shall see you online. Take care. Bye-bye.